cancer in this ever crazy changing world. It's good to have two sources of information that can help guide and inspire you. The tarot cards and the astrology stars. They're like having two wise friends. The tarot card for the first week of the month is the justice card. The tarot card for the second week of the month is the judgment card. The tarot card for the third week of the month is the ace of pentacles. And the tarot card for the last week of the month is the ten of pentacles. I hope you will like this video and also press the little bell for notifications when my new videos come out. Cancer. The tarot card for the first week of the month is justice. The sword that she's holding can cut both ways. The scale are held in a perfect balance, suggesting a positive flow between the past and the future. There are changes needed, but we can see that there are always people that might take advantage of the system for their own personal advantage. So this card says, let justice be done. Now, as we look down into the astrology, the month begins with Venus in the fourth house, squared to Pluto in the seventh, and squared to Moon in the second, and that is in opposition with Pluto, and that creates a very challenging T-square energy, and it suggests you need to keep your head in charge of your emotions. You might not agree with a family member when it comes to money, and you have to have cooperation and understanding, and that'll help keep the peace. This may be a little bit difficult for the Sun conjuncts Mars in the sixth house of daily routines, and that suggests a need to control excess energy through productive activities. There is a Saturn square to both Mars and the Sun, and that is coming from the ninth house of the higher mind. And it may help as it can help you channel your energy into your personal ambitions, focusing yourself towards the future. The tarot card for the second week of the month is the judgment card. Now, judgment is very important. It shows the angel Gabriel blowing the horn of awakening. You can see the people rising up from what appears to be a graveyard, and they're moving towards a new life. This represents the possibility of a new beginning and the development of a higher consciousness. Now, as we look into the astrology, week two shines under the new moon in your sixth house and bringing a new cycle of activity to your daily routines. You may have an increase in your workload and some new opportunities may come your way. Now, Mercury does go retrograde on the 13th in the seventh house of relationships, and he will trine Jupiter up in the 11th house, and that might bring some good news concerning networking opportunities through friends or business associates. So keep your options open, but also keep your eyes open. <laughs> now, there will be an opposition between Jupiter and Venus, and that says you have to be careful not to be tempted because you may be a little bit excessive, especially when dealing with romance and creative projects. And a Saturn trine to Venus uh, may be a key helper from the ninth house. This will help stabilize your emotions as you put your ambitious plans for the future into action. The tarot card for the third week of the month is the Ace of Pentacles. You can see it as being held out from the hand through the clouds. So this card represents the beginning of a new cycle of success in business or investments. There's a possibility of some type of inheritance or other type of gain that brings more pleasure 
and enjoyment into your life. So keep your eyes open for opportunity. Now, as we look down into the third week, the astrology begins with the sun in your sixth house squared to Neptune in the ninth. Now, the energy of the sun brings new activity to your work and daily routines. You feel very productive. However, the square to Neptune in the ninth suggest you may have big dreams, but may need a deeper understanding of your ambitions if you are to get ahead. Now, Venus in the fifth house will square the moon in the eighth, and that warns you not to rely on other people who may not have the same values or vision for the future that you do. This is reinforced by Mercury as he continues his retrograde motion in your seventh house. It suggests misunderstanding between partners. If you're going to move ahead, you must have cooperation. The tarot card for the last week of the month is the Ten of Pentacles. It shows a family in a garden in front of a very large house. And this is lush and extravagant and suggests that life is good. So this card suggests that wise investments and watching money can bring the good things of life. Now, as we look down into the astrology, the, the month ends with the sun entering Capricorn and your seventh house focusing on the traditions of the season and your desire to share all the good times with your partners. This is a good time to express your deepest feelings with them. You may also hear about a good opportunity since the sun will try Jupiter in the 11th, bringing a sense of generosity from friends and business associates who want to help you. Venus in the fifth house also trines Neptune in the ninth, which makes everyone feel spiritually renewed and gives a pleasant boost for your future ambitions. However, Mercury is retrograde and Mars in the sixth brings a note of caution that you don't forget about some important details or responsibilities at work. So stay aware of what you need to do. Hi, I'm Reverend Tom Kearns, and this is my story. If you are a spiritual seeker, it may help you on your journey. I believe your spiritual development is as important as your religion. If you look at Christianity, it focuses on the life of Jesus. But Jesus was never a Christian. He was Jewish. If this thought intrigues you, you'll enjoy my new book, Light from Water, Freeing Jesus. It's available on Amazon.com and through fine bookstores. And it may help you on your spiritual journey. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to thank you for listening. Please like my videos and share them with your friends. And if you'd like to know more information and how to get help personally, get a private psychic and spiritual reading or a natal transit astrology chart, go to my website, professorastrology.com and go to the private services page. And that's where you'll get the information. It's professorastrology.com. And I hope you have a great month.